right, thanks. So, hey, welcome everyone. Um, so, the, I'm, I'm Timothy Arvier and I, I, I work um, at Red Hat in the Cores team, mostly on Fedora Cores. And um, I'll be uh, talking here today about Fedora Kinoite, which is a new version, a new variant of Fedora that we're introducing with Fedora Certified. So let's get right into it. So first, the question is, OK, why Fedora? Why even bother with Fedora? And then why even bother doing this at all? And then, OK, where are the apps? Uh, and the, OK, well, with everything, we'll see a little bit about the future and what we want to do with that. So first thing, what is Fedora Kinoite? So Fedora Kinoite, essentially, it's a new Fedora variant, which is attached to the KDE SIG, so the special interest group in the Fedora uh, community. We 100% Fedora, so nothing in Fedora Kinoite is different from Fedora. It's just Fedora, but a little bit, a little bit of a different twist, and we'll see that uh, coming right away. Uh, so yeah, it's 100% Fedora RPM packages, so it's, it's pretty Fedora. The, the, the thing that's different, of course, we're not just building something else just for the sake of it, uh, is that it's an immutable desktop. We like to call it an immutable desktop, not in the sense that it won't change, but that you control how it changes, which is really important, like keeping control of your computer, of course. And of course, we hear at Academy, it's all about KDE, and uh, this variant is uh, featuring the KDE Plasma desktop. The first release for uh, Fedora Kinoite is, is planned for Fedora 35. So right now, Fedora 34 is stable. Uh, and um, we are in the development of Fedora 35, which should be stable something around October or something. Um, yeah. All right. So why Fedora? Well, there are a couple of things here that makes Fedora interesting uh, as a base for this project. The first one is that. Fedora provides a stable and up-to-date software oh. stack. So we integrate a lot of things in Fedora, a lot of open source projects, uh, fresh and uh, but stable open source projects. Uh, so we did a lot of work on, on Wayland. We have Wayland enabled by default, Pipeware enabled by default in Fedora 34, uh, System Video Sessions 2 in KDE. And all of that comes tested and baked into uh, the image by default. Um, with KDE, more KDE focused, uh, we always try, oops, is it still working? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, we always try to follow KDE packaging, uh, following KDE packaging, the latest release of KDE packaging. Uh, and uh, we try to go upstream first, uh, usually. So we try to make sure that every single patch is, is upstream first and uh, that nothing uh, that nothing is like only carried by us. We all, we, we all try to keep it uh, upstream. I'm sorry, I've been being a bit of trouble. I hope you can all see, still see me and hear me. And that should be fine. Uh, all right. So, oh, come on. Ouch. All right, how, I'll have to ask you if we change slides forward, but that should be fine. Um, and uh, all right, so yeah, we upstream first. And we, we are an active uh, special interest group. So we um, we have weekly meetings on Monday uh, at, at around 800, 1800. And uh, we, we, yeah, we're fairly active. All right, so what makes the difference? So it's a little bit different from the KDE spin, the classic KDE spin, because it's based on RPM with three. So it's a different technology to, to manage how you, you, you have your system. And essentially, the, the idea is that instead of managing single packages, you manage an, an image uh, for, for your operating system, and you move from one version to the other when you update. Uh, it's the same technology that's used in, in, uh, in Fedora Core S, for example, Fedora IoT and Fedora Silver Blue 2. Uh, so that's RPM history for managing the system. And then there's Flatpak where you to, that you use to manage applications. So the, the basics about Flatpak is that instead of installing applications as packages, you install them as different, well, different package um, as Flatpaks. And uh, they can come from different sources. So you don't have to, to add them from your distribution. You can add them from, from something else. Um, they could even be proprietary or provided by other vendors, and that's not an issue at all. 
And finally, when you've got all that, sometimes you have to do development, you want to have command line tools and things like that. And everything on Fedora Act Unite is using containers, essentially. So um, to, to, to manage containers, we use Podman, which is uh, a, a container manager, uh, which is very well suited for, for command line tools. Um, all right, and well, with, with all that said, uh, the, the first variant, this kind of variant that was introduced in Fedora was Fedora Silverblue, and essentially we are really close siblings of Fedora Silverblue because we use a lot of the same technologies. We share a lot of them. Okay, so what does it look like? Well, essentially it just looks like any regular KDE desktop. Like if you just booted a Fedora KDE spin and you compare it to a Fedora Kinoite spin, it's essentially the same. It looks exactly the same because it's the same packages, same software, same configuration, nothing changes except maybe a logo. We don't have a logo yet, but in the next, uh, in, the, in the coming week, maybe we'll have a new logo and that will be the only difference actually, if you look just uh, at, the, at the cover, uh, at the top. Uh, so here, here it is, it's, uh, it's a Fedora 35 that I freshly booted, recently booted. Uh, and uh, and so you just install apps using Discover, just like on regular KDE, it's just like all the only apps, well, mostly the only apps that you can install are flat packs. And uh, you've got the same menu, the same file managers, and everything, same browser. Nothing changes here. All right, so what's the current status of this initiative? Well, the official support is uh, still in progress. So, well, it's working. Uh, we already have, it's planned for Fedora 35, the first release. Uh, we, you, you can track all that on the on, on tickets I, I linked here. Uh, we already have so official uh, development builds. Uh, so in Fedora, we call that Rohide, the, the the development branch, uh, which is uh, which, which is like continuing development, and then uh, it gets branched for its release. Uh, so in October, or a little bit before October, it will be branched for Fedora 35, and then we will get our first stable release of Fedora Kinoite. Um, so right now it's Rohide, so it's development builds, but it's working. Uh, and uh, and um, we, I also produce an official build. So I produce an official stable build for Fedora 34, the current stable branch. Uh, the only difference between the Fedora 35 builds and the 34 builds is that I do the builds for Fedora 34, so it's not signed by Fedora Key, and uh, it's not signed, it's not built on Fedora infrastructure, it's built on my server essentially but it's still the same content. All right, so what's the goal behind all that? And um, what do we want to do behind uh, Fedora Kinoite and, and, and everything like that? Well, the main thing is want to create a really easy experience for users, which I think is like the top one priority. If you don't have yeah. users, uh, well, it's not worthy of making anything, well, most things at all, even if it's just you, but yeah, the, like we want to create a good experience for users. So the first one is, we use RPM S3 to manage the, to, to, to manage a system and make system updates essentially a non-event. The idea is that when you update RPM S3, it, it updates in the background. So you don't change your system live. It creates a new version of the system uh, and then you reboot into it. And that's that's the base idea because essentially you don't you don't have to wait for the supply. You don't you, you don't like, like have to wait for your computer to update before you boot or at, at the shutdown. You just do like the updates live on the system and we, it only only take place when you reboot and you just reboot into your new version. The, the base itself is also shipped as like one single consistent image. So you don't get like how things installs or how things uh, misconfigure things like that. It's just either install or not install at all. It's atomic, it's just one or the other in get mix. And if for whatever reasons you reboot into the new version and there's a bug, like, I don't know, there's an audio bug, a graphics bug, and you just, just want to go back because it's, yeah, it's your day, you don't like, you have things to do. And you just go back to the previous version, then that's easy. You just reboot into the previous version. It's always there and you keep doing the work while you try to figure out why the bug is there, report the bug or something like that. So yeah, that's the system. And RPM Stream makes managing the system really powerful and that's uh, the, the, the most of it. Then there's flat packs. Um, when you use flat packs, you get a lot of advantages right, right out of the box with the way flat packs work. Uh, so the main idea is that 
you can install and update applications just like on their own. You don't need to update anything on the system to make them work. Um, all the life cycles of the application is tied to the flat packs, and that's it. If there's nothing like linked to the system, and uh, it makes it really easy to update application, install new ones without even bothering whether or not it will pull any libraries, if there will be inconsistencies or or uh, conflicts or anything. That's never going to happen with flat packs. It's either there working or or not there, and that's fine. Uh, so yeah, it makes applications updates and changes completely independent of system updates, completely independent of the kernel, the changes, and everything on the desktop. Uh, we have two main sources of applications with Flatpaks. Right now, we have we have FlatHub, which has mixed uh, free and open source software and proprietary software, and we also have uh, our own set of Flatpaks built on federal infrastructure, uh, which we only contains uh, free and open source software only. And finally, the last piece uh, here uh, that makes it a great experience is Toolbox. So the idea is you, you have an immutable system. So you don't, you don't, you, well, it's not always practical to install a lot of the key tools or command line tools or things like that on your systems. And what you want to do probably is do most of that inside containers. And Toolbox is the best way to make that available. And it also instantaneously makes all the RPM packages from Fedora uh, available to you directly and uh, free of cost, really easy to, to use. And uh, you can also use Toolbox with other distributions. So essentially, you get all the software that is packaged everywhere inside every single distribution uh, using Toolbox. And you can run them as graphical applications on your desktop. And it will work, essentially, uh, in, in most cases. So yeah, that's like the last result thing, but that usually works for most things. Uh, all right, so that's like the basic thing. We want to make the user experience great, great for updates, great for install, access to software. Uh, you, you don't get to miss anything. And at the same time, you get all the benefits of easy updates, never, uh, never having fear that something will break if you update. So then, all right, we have users. but. Most of the times, we, we also try, sometimes even users try and do and test things. And we sometimes want to, as developer, uh, ship some updated software to users for them to test. And that's something that's really easy to do by to do with the same technology. So the main thing is, thanks to RPM3, you can actually give updates to your users and have them try them uh, just like one shot or things like that. and then. I let them go back to the stable versions. And that's really easy. That's something that's really hard to do with like, classic package managers. And that's really easy to do with uh, RPM history. So you give it, you, you don't give up stability and you 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 keep everything, uh, you keep everything working while testing the new version, for example. And uh, that's what you get with RPM history. You keep everything as is in the sense that uh, you get you keep all your files, you keep all the software, all the flat packs are still there, they're still stable versions. You just standardize the system and that's it. And you can always roll back if you got any issues. Um, if you want also, if you are a developer, you might be interested. Well, if you're testing uh, a tester, you might also uh, be interested to test new flat packs, new versions of flat pack apps. And that's something that's really easy to do with flat, flat pack too, because you can have multiple versions of the same uh, application install at the same time. And that's not an issue at all with flat packs. You can switch between versions easily and, uh, and install multiple versions in parallel. So you can always get like, the testing versions and the stable versions. So if any issue comes back, you can just start the, test, the stable one, and that's it. Uh, then, uh, yeah, and another thing that's great that with flat, it's really easy to produce flat packs from from like PR or GitHub uh, GitHub PRs, for example, or, or, or any any kind of PR uh, essentially. Um, and for so, for example, you could give like uh, create a flat pack repo, create a, um, a flat pack change, just one for one shape, for one fix, and have it sent to users, and the, then the users can try this and like make sure that validate that the change is correct. And, uh, and then uh, you, you can merge the code. Uh, yeah, so I, get, I put a link to GitHub Action because it's, it's a quick way to, to, to try uh, with, with, uh, to try and create flatbacks from, uh, from that. 
Right. And finally, we have developers. So if you are building on Kiddy, working on Kiddy, either the Plasma desktop itself or any applications, um, this is also a great opportunity for you because RPMS3 makes you um, take, keep, keeps you in control of what's changing on the system. So it enables control chains, I like to say. Uh, it's immutable, but you have control over what changes in the system. You can replace any RPM on the system. So you can, you can replace any component if you want to have some, so for example, fixes system D, you could replace that and reboot your system and make sure that everything works. If, for example, you're working on fixing things there uh, and, uh, and the interaction be key somewhere. Uh, and but you could replace any part of Plasma desktop and, and do the same. Uh, you can replace that live too, so you could apply the change, like restart your session, and that's it, you're good to go. Uh, there's no constraints uh, there, it's just um, essentially uh, there are a lot of tools to make that available still for developers. So it's immutable, but you still get to change it, it's just you have full control of all it changes. Uh, and for whatever reasons, yeah, it's development. Sometimes we make mistakes. If you want to go back to the version that's stable, that should be working, uh, then you can do that. You can either revert that change that you've made live, or if your system crashed, for example, if, any, if you had an issue, if you just reboot, you just go back to the stable version and that's it. Uh, so there's no rolling back packages, changing, or having a broken system, essentially you're never in a broken state. It's either working or you just go back to the previous version that should be working. Um, and for flat packs, it's a little bit of the same, essentially. Uh, so RPM3 is just for the system and flat packs. In flat packs, you can have any environment, any frameworks, any version of Python or any version of whatever you want installed and uh, any framework, and you will have that independently of what's installed in the system. So you don't get to, uh, you don't have any conflicts of whatever uh, when, you, you, when you're developing for in flat packs because you, you just get libraries uh, from the framework, for example, uh, if you build a KDE application and uh, you don't worry about, uh, about the conflicts about in, in a system or user missing dependencies, something like that, because everything is, is packaged uh, as a single system and will be shipped as is. Uh, so yeah, it's really liberating to have that in, in fact packs um, and um, uh, it makes it really powerful. All right, so, okay. So it's, we want to make a great experience for users, uh, testers, developers. So, okay, well, in Federal Query Night, do we actually have applications? Because for uh, most of the operating system, we need both. We need like uh, the, the system and we need applications, of course. Uh, well. The story here is still in progress. So essentially, uh, we already have Flatpaks for Fedora. So in, on Kinoids, uh, you install most of the applications as Flatpaks, and uh, you, all already, you can already install most of the applications that are available as Flatpaks from Fedora. So uh, right now, we have a good selections, but unfortunately, we don't have key applications yet in Fedora because we're still missing some couple of tricks uh, to make them work. It's still in progress. You can follow the status here in the issue. And uh, it's planned for Fedora 35. I'm, I'll try to make that happen for Fedora 35 with the Fedora Kinoite release, of course. Um, the, the main idea here is that once we'll get all the little things tweaked and, uh, and working, uh, we'll get all the already package application from Fedora, uh, KDE package application uh, in Fedora uh, on Kinoite essentially for free. Uh, so we'll get a lot of them uh, straight out of the box working. Uh, the main thing to remember is, is that they will be the same version as the one package in Fedora because essentially they will, even though they're not strictly built from RPMs, it's the same recipe. So uh, you will get uh, flat packs that are essentially really looking close, closely alike uh, to the RPMs once. And it's uh, always granted to be free and open source software because Fedora is about free and open source software. But then in the meantime, it's good. You, we already have a lot of key applications available on FlatHub. So on FlatHub, you get a ton of applications. I don't even remember the name, the, the name, the count of the current number of applications available on FlatHub, but it's high. Uh, you get either, uh, well, a lot of them. And uh, we quickly expanded the list of key applications available on FlatHub. 
you can search uh, uh, for all the key applications there. Uh, and we try to follow all with the latest upstream release. So they get it dated really, really, really fast when the releases are made. Essentially, it's on the day or the next day. Um, and Flap Hub is a great place to do a lot of things. It's a great place to uh, to fix applications and work with upstream KDE application developers to fix the application that sometimes don't really work well with the flat packs and boxing model. So some some latest changes are needed to to make them um, like really work or like pretty. Uh, I would say um, and. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of small tax, uh, tasks that are um, easy to get started on uh, that that are there uh, for for packaging either existing applications or to fixing some some uh, some display issues for some or things like that. So if you look at FlatHub right now, we have like a ton of apps on FlatHub. Uh, this is just like landing page with some popular applications. So it's mixed. There's both on FlatHub free and open source software and proprietary software. So uh, you, you get to pick which one you want to install, uh, but it's just to be aware of that. And uh, if you search for org.kd, you'll get KD applications, which is which are of course free open source software, uh, but they may come with uh, additional specific software that sometimes restricted in some places, such as FFmpeg or things like that, uh, for video uh, codecs or audio codecs. Uh, all right, so. I'm good on time. So let's see what's the future of Fedora Kinoise. So the idea is, okay, that's what's going to happen in Fedora 35, in the Fedora 35 side frame. We're really close to be too close at that uh, because I'll, I'll show you um, a running Fedora Kinoise instance just, just after that. Um, uh, but what's coming next? So essentially the plans for the future is uh, that we want to be the, the best platform to try the next version of KDE. So either KDE plus desktop and all the KDE apps. We want to make sure that users, developers, testers, everybody can feel safe like testing the next version of those packages, those applications, uh, easily using Kinoite, while at the same time keeping a working and stable desktop environment. That's like top goal. Um, so the first one is we want to make sure they, Plasma uh, beta release is available. So right now on Fedora, um, on, on the Road branch, we always take the latest betas, the latest stable versions. Uh, but it, the stable version will always be a little bit behind, of course. Um, so yeah, we want to make those available in, in a different way. And we want to also make key applications like um, pre-released or uh, nightly uh, flat packs of KDE applications uh, easily available to to users there. So that's both work like in Fedora Kinoid and work upstream too. So we want to work with upstream here um, we, to make sure that uh, uh, everything done upstream to 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 make application work in flat packs will be working well. Um, so on the on the there's already uh, upstream um, KDE um, testing versions of uh, nightly versions of KDE applications, uh, so that's good. And it's, it, I would say, it just need a little bit of polish uh, to to make it uh, work well. Uh, but the main thing here, so for, for on the Fedora Kinoid side, is we is bringing to users like beta versions of KDE Plasma Desktop uh, really soon, really really fast to um, uh, to the for, for testers on stable branches. And this is what we want to do in the short term. Uh, so have multiple delivery streams. So right now we'll, we, you will have essentially a delivery stream for each branch version of Fedora. So Fedora 34, Fedora 35, uh, and, and 36 uh, coming next in, in six months. Uh, and um, what we want to add is uh, essentially a new version so that will be Fedora stable. So the, the current stable version plus on top the, like the beta versions of the KDE Plasma desktop. So well, you will get like a really strong, solid, stable foundation like system the kernel, Mesa, the graphic stacks, uh, and everything, Firefox. And then on top, you'll get like the next, the, the beta plasma desktop available, or the Nike plasma desktop if there's no beta. And you can just try that. And so essentially, you don't. You don't. You cannot. You don't have to fear that. For example, there's a bug somewhere in the in the 
file system driver in the kernel in this development version because it's still a stable kernel. You're just using like the nightly pass map and stuff. So if things crash, usually it's just your system crashing and not everything on the system. And that should be fine. Uh, so yeah, that's like what we want to create, like this specific version that makes it really easy for users to taste the latest Plasma release on a very strong, stable version of the system. And I think that's something that does not really exist today. Um, and um, yeah, we we want also to make sure that everything gets tested before it gets released. So right now, it's we need a bit of mix because we do testing, but sometimes things go to uh, go to users uh, and we still have some 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 part missing around testing and we want to improve the testing here uh, yeah and essentially that's it for for the for the main thing we want to bring and that's a big one because uh, like enabling users to easily test the next versions is like something uh, without having to create virtual machines uh, create have a new laptop on the side to do the testing but like actually do the testing live is, is a big thing all right so Here's the like short summary of everything. Uh, well, we still don't have a logo. It's still in progress. Uh, There's an issue to, to track here. I'll, I'll share the slide somewhere. Oh, so the slide should be shared somewhere. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to join us for and help us do uh, on, on that journey, um, we're working essentially in the Fedora QE SIG uh, and we're working closely with Upstream. Uh, we meet every week on Monday. Uh, usually, we, we are a fairly, fairly friendly bunch, so feel free to join. Feel free to join. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can try it right now. Official development rules of Fedora Kino uh, uh, All the instructions are there. It's on the Fedora. It's on the Fedora infrastructure. Uh, and if you want to try civil versions of Fedora Kino Heights, so an official one, uh, non-official one, the one that built myself, uh, you can go ahead and try. Uh, in this uh, link of the Fedora magazine article. And yeah, I think that's time for a little bit of a demo. So let's see if this works. I think I'm good on time. I still have five minutes, something. And I can't hear anything, so because probably um, I need to fix my sound. Okay, so demo. Hey, Timothy, can I offer any help? Yeah, I'm trying to share a window. I'll have to. I'll have to switch presenter to a new to another brother. Uh, should be fine. Uh, okay, joining back. Oops, sorry. Can you switch presenter mode on the new uh, one session here? I have an audio, please. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, I'll I'll take the first questions if we have one right now. Well, I try to figure out how to share things here. Sure thing. 
So it looks like we have a couple. The first question is, when will we get uh, Kina for Plasma Mobile? Oops. I don't seem to be, oh, do you hear me? Sorry. Oh, she missed. <sighs> My bad, sorry, I'm back. Okay, well, our first question <laughs> is when will we get Kino for Plasma Mobile? Uh, yeah, this is planned. This will come when this will come when we have all the Plasma mobile application and changes a little bit of tricks into Fedora. I think this package is in progress for that. All right. Um, the other question we have is, are you using Keynote as your usual operating system? If not, what would be missing? So yeah, I am using Keynote on my main laptop and planning to switch my second computer to it once it's released it's in Fedora. Awesome. Um, can I offer any help helping to get that demo up? I'll switch brother again. Okay, uh, could you, uh, yeah, not on the other one, please, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sorry, it's a little bit of a mess because, let's go. All right. should be better. I'll try and resize that so that we get only the interesting part on the screen. And yeah, so this is essentially Fedora Kinoite. It's not squared, but yeah, that's twisted. Strange. Oh, that's extra weird. Yeah, all right. Um, so it's just regular kitty desktop. Let me, well, let's forget about that. I'll share something else. I'll actually share my laptop, which is running Fedora Kinoite. So yeah, here I'm on, uh, it's my laptop. And I'm running Fedora 34. So it's the unofficial version of Fedora Kinoite. And uh, yeah, so you can see here, I have two versions running. Uh, I have two versions installed. So I, I, I always at all times, we you usually have two versions installed in the system. So the first one here is uh, the, the, the version I'm currently running. It's marked by a small dot on the side here. And uh, I have some packages installed on top of this version. So we have Chromium, have Chrome, uh, HDOP, and things like that. And Vim, for example. And there's a second version underneath, which is the previous version that I had built before. Uh, so it's this one from last week, and this one is from two weeks ago. 
and uh, and yeah, I could just go back to the previous versions if there is any bug in this current version. And I'll do a build like on Monday or something, and uh, I'll uh, simply update a new one there. So that's essentially RPM S3 that you manage your system, and you have one image with all the components, the the, the KDE desktop and things like that inside. And then you get flat packs. So if you go try to look at flat packs, uh, I have here a lot of flat packs installed. Uh, so I have Slack, Spotify, so proprietary apps. And at the same time, I have Inkscape, for example, open source applications and some KD applications there that are installed from Flat Hub. Uh, so if I launch Dolphin, uh, It will run, uh, yeah, I need this to do all get kitty dolphin. Uh, oh, I have not dolphin installed. Is it? Yeah, I have dolphin installed. It's just with a small D. Uh, yeah, so essentially, if I when I run dolphin here, it's dolphin run as a flat pack. So it's the latest version of dolphin, even though I don't have this version on my system because um, here we're running like 21, uh, where is it? 21, four, uh, four, two. And if I run the system Dolphin, so the one that's currently installed on my system, it's a little bit behind because we have not updated the version in Fedora 34 yet. Uh, so you, I can run both actually. I can I could start the Dolphin, classic Dolphin one, and it's just fine. I'll have the, the version from the system and the one at the flat pack here at the same time. And they, just do absolutely the same because uh, essentially the the integration is really good with flat packs and you don't get to see much differences there. And uh, we've got a lot of other applications. We've got some the calculator, the image viewer is already there, the um, extractor, and uh, uh, yeah, and classic ones like LibreOffice, Firefox, Thunderbird, and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't know if, what, what should I show you uh, on, on, on the list up here? Um, yeah, essentially it's Fedora and it's a KDE desktop. So there's not much to, to show because it's basically behaving in the same way. Uh, so right now it's called Silverblue, but this is just like a preview version. Uh, and uh, yeah, and if, uh, if I was bringing, uh, the Horahide version, uh, you will get the exact uh, latest. Um, we, we're right now in, in Horahide, we are using the Fedora 2522, the Fedora, the KD 522 releases that we have. Uh, 25, 522.1 release, the latest one uh, built and, uh, and available that will be shipped to Fedora 34 uh, in the coming weeks. Right, do we have any questions left? Right. It seems we have a couple. Oh, Does KDE apps come from Flat Hub by default or from Fedora Flat Pack remotes? So by default, it's only Fedora because we want to make sure that only free and open source software is available by default. And uh, then you can have Flat Hub and get anything from Flat Hub. All right. Question I see is how do you handle things like the I'm just going to spell this out N V I D I A driver. Oh yeah, NVIDIA driver. So um, you can get that install easily. Uh, it's uh, it's it's working now. It's been, it's been working for a couple of releases. Uh, you can get that install. Uh, on top uh, of the of the image, and it will work. Essentially, it will rebuild the, the the kernel driver for every new version you deploy. And yeah, that's that's working. I don't have one NVG card right now, but I did testing, and it, it works. Great. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I hate to say it, but that is the end of our time. And thank you so much for being here and presenting. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me. Please feel free to jump back in the chats and 
and um, chat away, answer any more questions that come up. Sure, will do. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great rest of the day. You too. See you.